Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. Joining us today is Joel Nelson from Joel Nelson Outdoors. And we are going to be talking about towing your wheelhouse efficiently and safely. It's something that I see a lot of people online talking about, Joel. So uh, happy to have you on here today to talk about this topic. Thanks for having me, Chris. It's a, it's a great topic. And uh, I'll, I'll share what I've learned. I don't know it all, but uh, hopefully some experience can go a long way to helping somebody else. Yeah, what's your number one thing if somebody asks you what they need to know about pulling a wheelhouse? What's the number one thing you tell them? You know, the first thing is, 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 is really safety. And I've seen a lot of wheelhouses head down the road that have a number of issues going for them. When, when they first literally take the, the wheel turns the first few times, they're a lot of times uh, the hitch height is set either too high or too low. Um, they don't have adequate tire pressure, which is a really big one. Uh, these things, they're not on a full axle, right? So these, these tires are sitting on a single peg on each side of the fish house. And uh, not having adequate tire pressure, good tires is, a, is another big one. Another one is, is safety lights. So really, you start looking at how is it going to go down the road safely? Those are like the first three things I see right off the bat that you got to kind of get squared away before you can start thinking about how, how am I going to tow preferably or how am I going to tow better? Yeah, and those are things that really you're looking at before you even leave the house. Exactly. Probably what we want to get into first is kind of what you do before you even leave the house with taking a look at what you have. What kind of goes into, into your inspection routine? You, you hit on it a little bit there, but what are some things you're looking at? Sure. Um, you know, it's interesting. I start inside and then go outside. I feel like the inside things, a um, little bit more of a known commodity at times where if you've got something loose on the counter, it's going to act like a battering ram as you take off down the road. And uh, I think those of us with wheelhouses have learned the hard way that non-secured items, who knows where they're going to end up and in what condition and what small little things might do to your fish house. I think of, uh, I can think of uh, definitely keys or, or certain metal items hanging from the wall as the fish house moves. Um, they can wear a nice little groove in the side of your fish house. So I first try to secure all the items on the inside of my house and then I start working to the outside. And so for my outside checklist, I start with back to front. I look to see, I've got a rear camera on mine I make sure that my uh, plunger on my Yeti is pulled out so that I'm running everything. I've got full power to my batteries and it's connected and hooked up to the front. And that way I've got rear camera up above and I've got, you know, left, right uh, signal lights and brake lights going. That's good. I need those things figured out. Uh, and then I work my way forwards to the house. I make sure that my windows are shut. I have towed at times, so I have a little crack in the window and that's another no-no if there's any moisture going down the road. Uh, and then I also check the tires and make sure that the pins are in. There's a cotter key in each of the pins. I've got tires that are properly deflated or properly inflated. And then I work to the front. I make sure that my, uh, my propane cover is on securely and that's not going to blow off and take off down the road. And then the hitch and all that situation that's kind of its own deal and maybe we should tackle that separately. Yeah, let's let's unwrap that with the hitch and, and with your chains and everything and how you got that set up. You did touch on it a little bit earlier with making sure that the trailer is flat. So um, having the proper hitch obviously is first, but what are you right. from, from there? You know, like you said, a proper hitch, a good drop hitch, it's worth its weight in gold and an adjustable one is what I've got. It's nice to have one that adjusts at least three inches up or down. Um, and a lot of that has to do with what else you're towing, right? Because you might go from a boat that doesn't weigh down the rear end of your vehicle to uh, like my 21 foot Yeti, which does make it squat a little bit more. So having the opportunity or ability to adjust up and down with an adjustable rear hitch, that's, that's a big deal, definitely. And then you start looking at how you need to make your connections. And actually the Minnesota uh, Department of Transportation has some great educational materials on towing a load and literally going to the MnDOT webpage and looking at some of the requirements for somebody that is, is towing a load of any sort is actually really useful because you'll see on there, obviously you need to be connected your trailer plug, right? You need electricity and 
typically there's there's brakes involved there's electronic brakes my truck has a controller in it i plug it in and i have brakes going through that cord there's also a breakaway function where let's say the trailer separates from your truck there should be a, a little little cable that runs and connects to somewhere firmly on the back of your vehicle so if that little pin is pulled out brakes are automatically deployed on the disconnected vehicle and you know fish house so that needs to be set up correctly your chains need to be crossed and connected underneath the uh, the undercarriage and the trailering portion of your truck and then you definitely need to make sure that your jack stand is all the way up it's not loose there's no pin that the jack stand is going to automatically drop if you hit a bump and that if you have a scissor lift or some sort of hydraulic lift that there's a pin through that situation so there's a lot of steps right there at the back of the truck and the hitch to kind of go through one by one by one to make sure that you're set up and good to go you talked a little bit about it there, but probably the most common question that I see is, you know, can I pull this with this? Yeah. About, about vehicles and how sure. much vehicle is enough and what's not enough. What do you recommend there? You know, um, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of folks that'll tell you that you need a diesel three quarter ton or one ton truck to pull a 21 foot house or double axle house in general. Um, I think it's true from my experience that these, these types of, you know, diesel vehicles will, will do a much better job. You'll certainly get much better tow, towing mileage. You'll have less issue on hills and, and, uh, you know, any, any kind of inclines like that. But I tow mine with a half ton truck. Um, uh, my, mine is a 21 foot Yeti Grand Escape Edition. Now, granted that's an aluminum framed house, so it's a little bit lighter than your average fish house. If you have a great big 21, 24 foot uh, house, a, a three quarter ton gas truck or diesel or larger is certainly gonna perform better. The, the area that suffers with gas is, is definitely, if you're looking at a half ton gas truck, uh, you're gonna suffer mileage, definitely seven to nine miles per gallon, depending on your vehicle. And then you're definitely gonna be putting more wear and tear on that transmission as well. Um, You'd be amazed though at how good the braking, the e-braking systems are these days and controllers on the trucks. And that really saves some wear and tear on the vehicle in general, uh, as, well as, as well as some of your transmission. So um, I get along with a half ton truck in a perfect world if I just towed my Yeti and that was the biggest concern to me, I'd probably own a three quarter ton truck and I'm still considering it. Um, mm -hmm. But you kind of got to think, you know, are you buying the truck or the Yeti or the Yeti for the truck? How much trailering and towing are you really going to do? Um, you got to kind of weigh all those things out. It, it's very possible to use a half ton truck to tow these things, especially the lighter weight aluminum frame houses. But, uh, but yeah, definitely once you start talking three quarter ton gas or diesel or, or higher, you're certainly going to experience a better towing capacity, ability, uh, and, and, and definitely mileage. I think it's important too. You talked about having that that braking system built in. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of vehicles can pull these trailers, but not all of them can stop them. Uh, right. Having, having that uh, that trailer and brake system built into the truck makes a big difference too. I, yeah, that. I actually I had an see. instance where my brakes on my truck, um, I had a a vacuum or some some sort of cylinder braking cylinder on my truck go out, but I still had my trailer brakes. And it was amazing how much the trailer brakes aided my overall braking process, even with very little to no brakes on the truck at all. So I think it's a testament to how far they've come and how much easier it is to tow these days with those digital braking systems built into the vehicles like they are so often these days. Joel, you use your fish house in the summertime as well. You yeah. use it as kind of a camping unit, but I think most people that, that buy these are using them in the wintertime. What are the challenges of driving your truck with the wheelhouse on the back during the winter that someone might face that they wouldn't face driving in the summertime? And, and how do you kind of deal with those challenges? You know, uh, on the roadways, I find it not as bad as one would think. 
uh, the dual axle trailers that I'm used to running uh, are really good. They actually do a, a very good job at, uh, you know, keeping the load straight. Everything goes down the road quite easily. I don't have a lot of issues with sway. Uh, the single axle trailers can have a little bit more of that issue, especially a longer single axle trailer. But in the winter, it's just all about following distance, knowing your braking capacity and capability. And then making sure that uh, you know, you're not exceeding the speed that you need to be going. You're still towing something that's pretty heavy um, and you just gotta be a little careful. Now where I find I have the most issue or maybe where the most advice could take place is actually on the lake. Not so much on the road getting to the lake, but where I see people get into trouble and where even myself, I had a strong learning curve to get into was actually once you hit the ice. And what's that all about? Tell us about that. You know, um, I learned a really valuable lesson right off the bat and that you need good tires. Uh, if, if you got a half ton truck out on the ice and no matter what your snow conditions are, but especially once the snow starts to get really heavy duty, it really starts to come up against the bottom of the vehicle and slowing down your, your truck's ability to get good pull or when there's not much snow on the ice and your tires are contacting bare ice, good tires make all the difference in the world. And so really uh, your ability to go off trail, which is what so many people want to do, but get in trouble doing, <laughs> it relies on good ground clearance and good tires. So stepping up and spending the money on better tires will make for a better experience getting to the lake, but it'll also make for a much better experience once you get on the lake. The next tip with that is definitely good polarized glasses to view small variations in height of these snow banks. You can go along for hundreds and hundreds of yards and be just fine on the open lake and all of a sudden there's a drift that got started for whatever reason, maybe a small crack in the ice, and you can totally bury an entire unit, all because everything's white. If you're not studying what's ahead of you, you can miss it. And even worse, if you're trying to make a corner or turning while you hit one of those drifts. So those are some big tips that I have when, when you know, things that I've learned the hard way, uh, unfortunately. So. A good grain scoop shovel can help you, but never getting stuck to begin with is uh, probably the best bet. What we're seeing right now with uh, the current current uh, happenings in our world with COVID-19 are more and more people are getting out and going fishing, which I think is a great thing. I think what it may also lead to is more and more people getting into ice fishing and maybe people investing into wheelhouses that wouldn't have before now that they're not going to go to Hawaii or maybe they're not going to go to Florida or something, they're going to invest in a wheelhouse. We yep. may end up with a lot of first time owners this year, uh, people cruising down the road. And probably the scariest thing, I think the thing that people worry about the most is when that trailer starts swaying behind them. Yeah. What would you recommend for somebody they start to experience that? How do, how do they stop that? So swaying becomes a problem with, especially the single axles that are longer, but even some of the longer double axle, uh, uh, some of the longer double axle trailers. And it's especially a problem I find with friends of mine that, that tow with shorter towing vehicles, uh, like maybe a GMC, like a Tahoe, or even a Suburban isn't quite as long as your full size, you know, full size truck. The longer wheelbase on the vehicle, I feel certainly helps. But if you are encountering some sway issues, um, the professional trailering outfits, and they're everywhere these days. I can think of the, these guys sell everything from lift trailers to, uh, you know, big trailers for heavy equipment and also, uh, you know, as well as fish houses. They have a lot of that sway bar technology. And really all it is is a metal rod that prevents, that connects to the hitch on the truck and connects all the way back to a further back portion of the actual yoke on the trailer and it helps to take some of that inadvertent sway out by having another connection point rather than just the single connection point on the hitch so they can get you set up with one of those sometimes it's on one side most times it's on both and especially if you're towing with a shorter vehicle and a longer trailer um, it's probably worth investing just going to a professional that that sells and retails these things can even install it for you and get you set up right from the get-go. I think it's well worth the investment. Perfect. Been a great conversation with you today, Joel. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about that I didn't ask you about? 
You know, I would totally concur with what you mentioned regarding COVID-19 and what I'm seeing. Uh, I'm an avid turkey hunter and there's turkey hunters everywhere now. I'm an avid fisherman and license sales are up 40%. And as we look to what these things can do from a camping perspective, from a hunting vehicle perspective, from something that we ice fish with in the winter, um, it's a way that we can stay fishing and having fun and hunting and camping with our families without exposing ourselves to undue risk. So yeah, I mean, I concur. I think we're going to see a lot more of this rather than a lot less. And uh, I'm excited to get out and do some camping. I've got a spring turkey hunt plan myself out of my Yeti. So uh, I think you're right on the money with that assessment. And to be honest, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to it myself. So I've got, a, I've got on my website, joelnelsonoutdoors.com, I've got a number of articles about first time uh, usage of a fish house or a camper. And uh, maybe some of those articles might prove useful to the, to the viewing public. Yeah, it was actually just on your website before we started this and you had an article on there about the things you should look at before buying a house, how you're gonna use it, the seasonalities of it, which right. I think if there are people in the market right now, that's it's a great uh, piece for people to read things to think about before they pull the trigger on one. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks for the time. And I appreciate having me, uh, Chris, and uh, looking forward to getting out and doing some fishing. All right, take care. Good luck on the water. Good luck in the turkey woods. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.